Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of object pooling, why you would use it, and how you can set it up. We'll go over a basic system, and then at the end, I'll give you a link to a more advanced system that I use in real-world situations. So for the demo here, I've got a bomb that I grabbed from the asset store from this ball pack that's free. And I've added a rigid body and a sphere collider, and then a bomb script. The point of the bomb script is to handle collision, so when it hits the ground, it blows up. It just destroys itself. And then in the awake, I just allocate a little bit of memory here to simulate this being a slightly heavier object. Since it's a really, really simple object, it's hard to show the memory usage kind of peak up on a high-end system like what I'm working with. So let's jump back over to the editor, and I'll hit play, and I'm going to show you how this demo works. We have some spawners here, these cubes. And all they're doing is spawning a bomb and dropping it down. They hit the platform down below and they blow up when they hit it. So you can see them kind of disappearing. Now the spawn randomly script, again, relatively simple. It's got a delay field here. I've actually turned this down in the editor. It has an instance to a prefab. And then here we use a basic timer. If you haven't seen my timer video, go check it out. But this is just the timestamp version of a timer. So we go through every 0.5 seconds, or here every 0.01 seconds. We spawn a bomb, and we do that right here by instantiating a new bomb at a position that's a random point in the box. This last time here is just for the timer so that we don't do it every frame. So we instantiate it, get the position and the rotation we just leave to default, and we're done, and then that's this implementation. Let's open up the profiler now and take a look at what's going on. So we open up profiler, and here I'm gonna watch the CPU usage and you can see there was already a spike here so let's let's let it go and see if there's another spike in just a second oh, there we go here's another spike so let's just drag over here and it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on but what I'm gonna do is uncheck all of these objects in here except for garbage collector which is actually like a dark brown it's a little bit hard to see but if you take a quick look you see that's where the spike is coming from this one it's 25.5 milliseconds which is pretty huge considering this is on a really high-end desktop system. On a mobile system, this would have totally blown out our frame rate and paused our game while the garbage collection was happening. Now, what's going on here is that we're instantiating these objects, all of these bombs here, and then when they hit the ground, they're getting destroyed. So that memory that was used to hold the object is getting released, and then a new one is getting created, taking up new memory, and then the old ones get released. And that process of releasing it is done with the C Sharp or .NET garbage collector, which isn't the fastest thing in the world because it automatically manages the memory for us. It does have a small performance drawback. And like I said, on desktops, it's not a huge drawback. We could probably get away without it in this case. But on a mobile system, this would totally kill your performance. Or on the console, you, know, you don't want to have garbage collection you at least want to minimize it on both of those platforms and it's also just good to minimize it in general on PC as well so what we can do now is set up a pooling system so that instead of these objects getting created and destroyed they just get reused so I've got that actually created here with a very basic pool system so let's open it up take a look at the code and then I'll run you through how it works and show it real quick so in the basic pool we have one serialized field for a prefab that we can just assign in the editor we have a queue of available objects, and a queue, if you haven't used it, just works like a standard line where things come in at the end and they go all the way through, and then whatever came in first comes out the other side. So you just keep adding things to the end of the line, and they get through and they pop out the front. And then we have a static basic pool instance. This is just a simple singleton so that we can access this basic pool from other scripts in our demo. And in awake, we actually set this instance variable to this one object. So if we had more than one of this, it wouldn't work. But again, this is a simple sample of a pooling system. You check out the more advanced one in the link below. And then we call a grow pool method. So the grow pool method just does a loop 10 times and we create the prefab. We use the instantiate call that we were using before. We set the parent to be the pool, just to keep track of where these things are. I prefer it that way. You don't have to do this, it's optional, but if you don't wanna have everything in your root, it's probably a good idea. And then we call add to pool, and we add the object to our pool. Adding it to the pool is essentially as simple as setting it to not active and adding it to our available objects queue. And we do that with the enqueue method. 
And if we scroll up here, you'll see there's a get from pool method. This thing is public and we're gonna use it from our spawner that's spawning these bombs. And it checks to see if there are no objects left in the pool. If there aren't any, it just grows the pool. So it'll just make it bigger. So we'll go from 10 to 20, we'll go from 20 to 30 and so on until we get to the point where we no longer need to grow it. Um, next we create or we get the instance from our available objects queue and we use the DQ method here that just removes it from the queue and returns it we set it to active and then we return it so let's see how we would set that up in our game or our demo scene here so in the spawn randomly script instead of calling spawn bomb I've made a separate method called spawn bomb from pool let's take a look at that so here in spawn bomb we would just instantiate it out of position and oh it was pretty simple here we're not doing much different though in spawn bomb from pool we're assigning a bomb and we're calling basic pool dot instance dot get from pool so we just tell the pool hey give me a bomb and then we set the position so that's the only real difference this versus this now there's one other thing that we do need to do though we need to go into our bomb and our bomb needs to no longer destroy itself on collision enter instead what we need it to do is go back into the pool so we can just call basic pool dot instance dot add to pool and we just pass in our game object so now instead of these bombs getting destroyed, they just get disabled and shoved back in the pool for later use. So let's check that out. We'll create an empty game object and we'll add the basic pool script and then we'll assign the bomb ball prefab right here. That looks good. I'm gonna drag this off for just a second. We'll hit play, watch it, and then we'll look at the profiler. So here we go. You can see these bombs are still falling exactly the same. And let me just drag the profiler back over. And if you take a quick look, you'll notice that we're not hitting garbage collection anymore because we're no longer just creating and destroying these objects. They're all just getting reused. They're all right here underneath this. Let me rename this thing to pool. So now the bombs right here, you can see them getting activated and deactivated as they come in and out. So this is kind of the really simple basic version of a pooling system. Again, I would go with a more complicated and more advanced system later. Check out the one that I'll link to you at the end of this and at the bottom in the description. I think it's a lot better system. It's a little bit more generic and you can pool all kinds of things with simpler syntax. But no matter what you do, you should definitely learn about pooling and set up an object pool of your own for any objects that are getting spawned and destroyed even semi-frequently. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to like and hit subscribe. And if you have comments or questions, just leave them below. Thanks.